5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is pst, their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. Why do we have border control? As I mentioned in the last video, the Australian Quarantine and Inspection Services are basically the officers at our airports and, and our docks, our um, shipping docks, that make sure that things that enter are disease-free. But also to make sure that introduced species don't enter Australia. So these are introduced species. The fox, which in this picture is quite cute. The cane toad, which is not that cute and the rabbit. These are all introduced species that came actually legally. They came um, because they, we thought that would be a good idea to bring them. This was quite a long time ago. Now we know more about introduced species. But we want to make sure that introduced species don't come from overseas, from different countries, because they can cause havoc to our natural ecosystems, which these have, the fox, the cane toad, and the rabbit have. So the uh, Australian Quarantine Inspection Services make sure that introduced species don't enter Australia, but they also make sure that disease don't, doesn't enter Australia. So for example, here we have a leaf which is infected by a pathogen, which might be a new pathogen which isn't, which there's basically no cases of in Australia yet. But if this leaf were to enter Australia, then the infection might spread from that small leaf to other parts, and then the infection would take over Australia. So uh, the AQIS will make sure that we can find these infected plants. The easiest way to make sure they don't enter is just not allowing plants and, and, and animals products to enter. But they have to inspect all different plants to make sure they can find different types of pathogens which might be on the actual plants to see that if they are diseased or not. So this is what you're going to do in this experiment because it's actually an experiment. So students will perform an investigation to examine plant shoots and leaves and gather first information on the evidence of pathogens and insect pests. So more or less what you're doing is actually the job of the AQIS. You're inspecting different types of leaves for evidence of pests or of pathogens, which could cause problems in Australia. So first, what you should know is you should know there's different types of possible infections for leaves. So what you have to talk about, you have to examine plant shoots and leaves. In this video, it's going to be mostly leaves, but plant shoots are just if, for example, they have you know, the stem and then you have leaves. The stem is often called a shoot, right? So that's, that's a shoot. And some infections will also infect the shoot. Others will infect both the shoot and the leaf as well. So most of these are infections that enter, that infect the leaf, but some of them will also infect the shoots as well. Right, so you should notice the different types of infections. So for example, virus infections, bacterial infections, fungal infections, and insect pests, which are the ones you actually you should know about. And what you should also know about is that these infections have different types of patterns. Right? They have different types of patterns. So for example, a virus infection, you can usually tell because there's going to be a change in the color. This is quite common. There's going to be a change in the color, or there's going to have they're going to have strange patterns happening, right? I can now show you an example of a pattern in a second. Or there will be malformations, which means that the leaf itself will not look as it should. It might be you know, twisted or bent or something else. It will not be straight. It will not be as it should be. So these are signs that a virus has infected this leaf. And the example is the rose mosaic virus. So this is an example of, first of all, a color change and a pattern as well. So you can see the color change. This is the infected area. But you can see it actually makes nice patterns. So it's kind of a that's why it's called a mosaic virus, because it has this nice pattern. But this is a sign of an infection, and more specifically, of a virus infection. Now, bacterial infections have usually have different characteristics. First of all, they can be, have spots on the actual leaves. That is often a sign of a bacterial infection. They can have something called gals. And what gals are are these little bumps. You know, these little bumps, you might, you might have noticed them sometimes. These little bumps on your leaves. That is considered to be a gal and a blight. Blight is well blight. What that means is basically that parts of the actual leaf itself have died off. So you can see here, this is you know these brownish parts. These parts have died off, and that's what we consider blight. So parts which are dying are blight. An example is the example of a bacterial infection is the bacterial blight that affects your pea plants. So you can see here's a pea plant, and you can see that their parts dying due to bacterial infection. And that is a 
problem because obviously it means the planet itself will die eventually as well. So this is the example of a bacterial infection. A fungal infection, these are actually the most common. So you have most common inf infection for plants are fungal infections. And what kind of characteristics do they have? Well, they have spots, just like the bacterial infection. They can also be spots, which give away that there might be a fungal infection. They can have powdery parts. You can see the picture here, so some powder. I'll go over in that picture more in a second. Go over that picture. And they can also have blight. Just like the bacterial infection, they can also have blight. Now, you can see this powder here comes from the powdery mildew. That's the fungal infection. And it's literally just powder which starts to sort of encompass the whole, like, the, all the whole leaf itself is full of powder. And that means there's a fungal infection. And this leaf will eventually die because of that powder as well. It will kill it eventually. But um, there's one way we can, because spots and blight are both for bacterial infection and fungal infection. But one way we can differentiate the two is fungus, fungal, are a lot bigger. So we can see them under the microscope. They'll be a lot bigger than the bacteria are. So to see if, if we have spots on both, if we look at a leaf that has spots, what we can do is we can look under the microscope to see if we can see the actual microbe under the microscope. If it's quite big, that means it's often fungus. Now we have the insect pests. These are ones where we often, you know, you might see a leaf which has parts bitten off. That could be, for example, a grasshopper or a um, other insect which bites these areas off. That's one sign of an insect infestation. Maybe there's some signs of insects, you know, maybe there might be some droppings, so some feces droppings, or other signs that insects have been around. That's another sign that there might be an insect pest that it's caused this problem. Or the leaf itself might die, so leaf death. And the reason why leaf itself might die is because sometimes they suck up all the, the sugar from the plant. That's what insects do, they suck up all the sugar. And obviously these plants need sugars, so without sugar, they will obviously die as well. An example of a insect infest infestation is the leaf miner. Now this is actually an actual larva, a larva from a butterfly, so a little baby butterfly, before it pops out of its cocoon. Um, it will be inside an actual leaf, so you can see here this is it. It's inside the leaf, and what it will do is it will basically eat the inside of the leaf, which is why you can see all this place here, all of this is hollow. So that means there's nothing inside. That's why they call the leaf mine. They're basically mining the leaf. They're eating the inside of the leaf. So that's one giveaway that there might be a insect inf pest inf 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 infestation. Sorry, infestation. Right, so you should know about these four types and just a rough idea of what each and everyone, what characteristics each and everyone has. Now for the actual experiment, it's a relatively straightforward experiment. What you should definitely have is you should have the affected and the unaffected sample. So you should have one leaf which is affected and one leaf which is unaffected. Or if you're looking at shoots, one shoot which is affected, one shoot which is unaffected. Because if, if for example, you were to look at this leaf, this is in this case is the affected leaf. If you're only looking at this leaf, you might not be able to tell there's something wrong. But if you can see the actual original version, which is this one here, you might see, okay, well, it's not looking at like, like it should look. There's a part here which is quite sort of mal for malformed, it's it's not as it should be. And then we can look at why viruses have malformations as one of their characteristics, which means this part might be a virus infection. If we don't have a control sample that we can look at, we wouldn't know what's actually happening, what's wrong, what's different from the way it should look. So that's the first step. We should have a sample of what we have, the affected one and the unaffected one. So we can compare the two. Then we should have some sort of magnifying glass or even a microscope. That means we can have a closer look, right? So for example, we can have a closer look at looking at these different types of insects that might have be, be there, or the look at the spots more closely, or in the case of a possible bacterial fungal infection, we can actually look at the, the infection under the microscope. And if we see a, you know, a big, sort of lots of big different types of microorganisms, which are these ones here, these are actually fungus and they're quite big. And that would suggest that the actual infection is a fungal infection and not a bacterial infection, because fungus, fungals, or f fungi, are a lot bigger than bacteria. So if they're quite big under the microscope, that means they're probably fungus, not bacteria. And what you should also have, you should have information or knowledge about plants and the pathogens which are possibly invading the plant. So if you're given leaves, it'd be good to find out what kind of plant it comes from, because then you can find, about, find out what kind of pathogens often infect that plant, and then you can, you can draw a valid conclusion in terms of what infects what. Right, so these three steps are steps you should be doing when you keep, are given your plants or your leaves. 
should have, make sure you have a affected and unaffected one, should be able to observe it quite closely, and should have some background knowledge of the plant itself and of possible things that infect the plant and their characteristics to be able to tell what has actually infected the plant. That's your that's the purpose, to find out what actual pathogen has infected the plant that you're looking at. And one more important thing is a safety precaution. If, for example, you're looking at a plant, so this is a plant here, and you know there might be one leaf which is affected, so this is, has the disease, and this leaf does not have the disease, what you want to make sure is there's no cross-contamination. You want to make sure you don't bring this disease onto the other leaves. Right? So that's one safety precaution. Make sure you're careful by not spraying the disease. So wear gloves, wash your hands, make sure it doesn't spread. So that's a safety precaution. Make sure the pathogen does not spread from one leaf to the next leaf, especially if you're using one plant as your sample. So yeah, for this experiment, you would just need to know about these different types of infections and you need to be able to identify what kind of pathogen the wider group, and maybe even more the specific groups. For example, the wider group might be a virus infection. More specific is the rose mosaic virus. You might have to find that out during your actual experiment. But yeah, these are the important steps. And you might be given questions in your exam, like telling you to outline the steps you need to know. So these are the steps. One, two, three, and safety precaution. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.